yours. Sourdough bread smells delicious and tastes delicious, but for something that's quite deceptively simple and is on our plate sometimes every day, there's a lot of science and a lot of microbiology that sits behind this lovely loaf of delicious bread. Bread in its very simplest form is three ingredients, flour, salt, and water. And when the flour and the water are together over a long period of time, you get a fourth really important ingredient in sourdough bread, and that's the yeast and the bacteria that start to ferment in that starter culture. These yeasts are really interesting if you're a microbiologist because they form this stable community with the bacteria that are found there. And so our lab has been looking at what those yeasts and the bacteria are and how they interact with one another. So we know that the yeast that you can buy off the shelf in the supermarket is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. It's the, the workhorse of the yeast world. It does everything, you know, it's a strong fermenter, but it tends to ferment very quickly and without a, a wide range of interesting flavours. When we, we look at sourdough starters from artisanal bakeries across Victoria and, and on the east coast of Australia, we've been finding that Kazakhstania yeasts predominate in these sourdough bakeries. And Kazakhstania yeasts are a different genre altogether and they have a wide range of different characteristics. And they're really interesting because they, they form very stable associations with the bacteria in the starter. Now these bacteria are lactic acid bacteria, um, particularly lactobacilli, and they work together to ferment. So the yeast tend to produce gas, which are these bubbles that you see, and they help leaven the bread so it rises and you get this lovely big plump loaf. The bacteria are working also with the yeast. They take nutrients from the yeast to grow, but then they, they tend to produce acids. Now these acids um, give a sour note to the bread, which is of course why we call it sourdough. Some of these acids have got really distinctive tangy flavours. When we consider where the yeast and the bacteria are in the sourdough, the next question for scientists is where do they come from? And so I've been thinking about this a lot and reading lots of papers. And then when I was on holiday um, in the Western districts of Victoria, I was like, okay, cool, we can finally do an experiment on this. I was driving along the road and saw a pile of grain on the side. Great, collected some up, milled it and, and added water and took it back to the campsite and left it out in the container. And after just, um, I think by the end of that day, it started to ferment. You could see there were bubbles on the top of the culture, which means that there was microbial activity starting to take place. Now, we don't know what yeasts and bacteria were there at the moment, but we can start to speculate where they might come from. They might be on the grain that we, we found, it might be some from our hands, it could be in the container, it could be from passing insects actually. And um, we know that some uh, insects such as Drosophilids, they carry a big community of yeast and bacteria and the same genres and species are found in sourdough starters. So that could also be a way that they're introduced. So by the end of this first day, it was smelling not very pleasant, a little bit rank. Um, but after a while, we, we were feeding it every single day with flour and water um, and tipping a little bit out, feeding it with some flour and water and it started to settle into a nice routine. You could see it rise over the day, it would then collapse a little bit and then we'd feed it again and it'd start to do that as well. And then it started to produce some pretty nice aromas and it was ready to make some lovely loaves of bread with some very distinct flavours and aromas that I hope we could, we could perhaps one day link back to the western districts of Victoria where I took the grain from originally. So we started looking at the microbial diversity of sourdough starters and, and we were given a starter from a baker friend which originated in Alaska. When we looked at this in the lab, we found a really interesting assemblage of yeast and bacteria. And we started wondering, well, is this the same starter that would have come from Alaska all of these years ago? I think the tradition of this particular starter was it was 120 years old. Um, we've no real way of telling, and, and we would suspect that over time, um, moving from baker's hand to baker's hand and from different bakeries, moving continents, and then being fed with Australian flour would mean that the microbial diversity is quite different to what it would have been when it was started in Alaska all those years ago. Now, we've got some evidence, I guess, that would support that because my collaborator in France, uh, Delphine Sicard, is really interested in 
uh, yeast diversity in French bakeries. Now we know that the French have a very strong tradition of bread and she's been investigating the diversity of yeast and bacteria in sourdough starters in these farmer bakers which are a very closed ecological system. They grow their own wheat, they mill it, they make the bread and they sell it and comparing that to a more industrialised uh, bread making system. Now, the farmer bakers in this closed system have a very distinct microbial diversity there, and that's quite different to what you'll find um, in the more industrialized process. So this is an emerging story. Now, I'm really excited to think about what we might discover about Australian yeast.